The last parameter I want to show you is my favorite parameter. It's right ventricular strain. What is it? Well, basically, we're using a technology which is called speckle tracking. Here we are tracking the motion of these bright little echoes that you see throughout the entire myocardium here. And with this, you're able to actually look at the percentage shortening of the myocardium. Especially important is the motion of the longitudinal function, which can be assessed both for the left and for the right ventricle. Now, the left ventricle, of course, was the first ventricle that we use speckle tracking on, and there's just so much data that shows it's an early marker of left ventricular function, and there's just so much data on this already. But there's also an increasing amount of data on the right ventricle showing that it works quite nicely. We're, of course, defining, first of all, which parts of the right ventricle should be tracked. In this case, we're only tracking here the lateral wall. And then we perform the analysis, and the system basically gives us a percentage value of contraction, in this case, of the lateral wall. And this is a methodology which allows you to do a lot of calculations. Not only can we look at the entire myocardium, but also look at the individual segments, the base, the mid, and the apex. We have different ways of displaying these curves and, uh, and the data. But the bottom line is that we now know that there is a value that is somewhere in the range of minus 27, 28, which is normal. Now, this is a value which is higher than the global longitudinal strain that you would use for the left ventricle, simply because, as you remember, the right ventricle shows more longitudinal contraction. And there's been some discussions in the literature with different papers showing different cutoff values. Here we had some papers where the values were probably too low. But speckle tracking is now included in the guidelines as a methodology that you can use to assess right ventricle function.